You have heard good cops, bad cops, but what about good cops versus bad cops? I'll see you again for uh, disorderly us. conduct. Public you can property dip not disorderly. From wrongful arrests to tasting the innocents and hiding criminal activities, these cops got chewed out and even fired for their misdeeds. In this video, we will be targeting the cops who were trying to get away with their big egos and wanted to mess with the civilians unjustly. Luckily, there are a bunch of good guys in the police department who knew something fishy was cooking and decided to put an end to it right then and there. Sit back and enjoy this train of disasters. Number one, cop gets an earful for wrongful arrest. This cop probably had a bad day and decided to take it out on these couple of protesters, but his wrongful actions are about to give him a taste of his own medicine. These two protesters seem to be going about their way quietly as they did a peaceful protest. But the cop in question does not seem to think the same. He believes they are trespassing on private property. So he walks up to them and demands they provide ID so he can hand out a summons. While one of the protesters listens out of fear, the other speaks out against the wrongful demands by the officer. During the very small exchange, the police officer somehow decides that he is eligible for an arrest, so he leaps at the protester. This forced the protester to run. The cop wrongly believed that the protester was evading a legal arrest. So, he took out something that tainted an already worsening situation his taser. He ran miles after the protester, carrying his taser in his hands, and even went as far as to use it on the young man. That will not end well for this cop. Seconds into the running fiasco, the cop was stopped by his sergeant, who put the cop in place within minutes. But even after being told by his superior that he was not doing his job right, the cop still seems to be over his head. He attempts to justify his crimes against the protester. But the sergeant, put a halt to the conversation and ended his long talk right there and then. The protester was not very happy though. He filed a lawsuit against the cop who harassed him, claiming that he only ran because the officer's actions reminded him of the brutality incident that took George Floyd's life. The police department settled the case by paying $175,000 to the protester. After that huge payout, the cop might have received more than a lecture at his facility. Number two, superiors fight back with a drunk cop. A woman filed a complaint about a police car swerving out of its way on the traffic lane. She also stated that the car almost hit a mailbox and was moving erratically in the opposite lanes. Upon receiving the call, two superiors of the police department immediately left to investigate the scene. The department called the driver and confirmed that it was a cop driving the police car. They called him to a location so they could figure out the route behind the whole drama. Upon initial questioning, the cop claimed that he must have dropped something in the car that made him swerve in the traffic lanes. I have heard better lies from kids, to be honest, and the superiors surely caught up with it within seconds. One of the superiors quickly searched the car and found something suspicious. It clearly indicated the cop could have been under the influence, but he flatly denied consuming any alcohol and claimed he believed he was fit to drive. The superiors, though, were not having any of it. They did what would be standard procedure for civilians in such a situation, administering a sobriety test to prove their innocence. The only problem was that this cop had a turnaround to escape from the test. He said that he had family issues at home and had to cater to them. For this very reason, he cannot follow up with a test at the moment, but will surely get back to them that day. If he was innocent, he would have been done with the test and moved on. The good cops tried convincing him, but the misfit would not budge. He tried to divert the issue by stating that his superiors were creating a personal agenda against him. Now that was just out of line, but the senior officers still dealt with him patiently. They even threatened him that he could either do a test right now or be put on administrative leave. Even that didn't put the cop in his place. At the end, the superiors managed to get the police car away from him and allowed him to hitch a ride with someone. But as soon as he got to work the next day, he was put on administrative leave. An investigation was started and the cop was found to be guilty. He was immediately fired from the job. Justice served. Number three, traffic cop. Put in his place by his sergeant, 
This traffic cop seems to be on a personal agenda against a certain citizen, but his sergeant will soon tell him off for making the wrongful arrest. Officer Akers was at a traffic stop when he saw someone pretty familiar cross by him, but the woman in question, Miss Trevino, did not innocently pass by. She flicked him off from her car, and that did not sit well with the officer at all. He explained the incident to his sergeant and claimed that she changed lanes without signaling and gave him the middle finger. After justifying what he was about to do, he went straight into his car and ran after Miss Trevino's car to stop her. The problem was that the woman did not randomly give a middle finger to a police officer. Officer Akers and Trevino had a bit of history. Several years ago, Trevino was detained very forcibly by Officer Akers under questionable circumstances. So, when she saw the officer standing on the street, she decided to communicate her feelings. But what she didn't expect was that the cop would take that a bit too personally. But here's the interesting part. The cop clearly hated the fact that Trevino showed off the middle finger to him, indicating that he made the arrest for personal reasons. When she was put into the car, the sergeant wasted no time in putting the cop in his place. He gave him a small lecture and asked if he would have arrested any other citizen for the same offense. To this, Akers clearly admitted that he would have given a ticket had it been someone else. This shows that there might not have been enough probable cause for the cop to make the arrest making it unlawful for him to arrest Trevino. After having a talk with the sergeant, he was forced to release Trevino with a ticket. There is not much information on whether Trevino contested the ticket in court, but it all shows that the cop's personal agenda could have put the woman in trouble had it not been the sergeant who helped her avoid it. Number four, sergeant makes sure bad cop is fired. And if this cop did something so horrible that it ended up getting him fired from the police department. Officer Dance Lukes received a distressing call about a man banging at the door of a home recklessly. The person also claimed that the man had a gun attached to his waistband. The officer responded to the call and immediately rushed to the location. Upon arriving there, he got out and instantly pulled out his gun. He ordered the two people standing near the door to drop to the ground. The footage clearly shows that they both immediately surrender at the cop's call. One of them lies down on the ground, while the other, Mr. Galeyard, puts his hands up in surrender. But apparently, that was not enough for Officer Lukes. He headed straight to Galeyard and forcibly pushed him down. Now keep in mind that Galeyard is a 58-year-old disabled man. Not only did the officer force the old man down, but he also placed his foot on his back, which caused him to hit his head on the ground. After he had detained the two people, he realized he had messed up terribly. He reported to the other two officers how Galeyard had his hands in his pockets and refused to listen to his orders. He distorted the whole scenario in front of his partners, forgetting that the body cam footage had already captured a different scene that clearly portrayed him as the villain. Um, but that's not all that this cop did that put him in trouble. When the sergeant arrived, she called an EMT to assess the two detained. The other suspect asked for the ID from Officer Lukes, but he claimed that he was not issued one by the police department. He was blatantly lying to cover up his crime. But the sergeant caught up to him, gave him a death stare, and gave the other suspect her ID immediately. There were many witnesses that opposed the statement Officer Lukes gave to his partners. He had clearly violated the law by physically assaulting a disabled man and had later lied about it. Cops can only use force in certain situations, and this was not one of them. Two days after the incident, Officer Lukes was fired from the department. Mr. Galeyard had filed a lawsuit against the bad cop, and the settlement reached nearly $650,000. Well-deserved justice for our bad cop, that's for sure. Number five, Sergeant rescues the citizen from arrogant cops. This citizen was filming a crime scene when two cops decided to intervene and make matters worse for themselves. Trevor was in his car and filming the vehicle in front of him. Apparently, it was a crime scene where the people in the vehicle were charged with possession of drugs. But the two cops probably did not like being filmed because there seems to be no other explanation for what happened next. When they saw Trevor, they decided to team up and bully him. They made their way to Trevor and accused him of trespassing on private property. But since Trevor was far away from the houses, they then altered their accusation, saying that he was trespassing on the privacy of people 
by filming a private property. Now, automobiles are allowed to be filmed by citizens just like they are allowed to be searched by the cops in traffic stops. Many states exclude automobiles from being private property since it is out in public, so their accusation was probably invalid. When Trevor argued over their unnecessary blame, they claimed that he was obstructing justice and demanded that he identify himself. Trevor was not very compliant, but he had every right to remain silent. The cops went as far as to threaten Trevor that if he did not give his identification details, they would throw him in jail. Now that is some big talk by the bad cops. When Trevor asked what crime he had committed, they stated that he was a witness to a crime and he should be providing the details to the officers. Um, when the two knuckleheads were in no mood to listen to Trevor, he demanded to speak to their sergeant. When he arrived at the location, he clearly stated that Trevor was free to go and the cops had no reason to detain him. Even then, both the officers had a lot to say to Trevor, trying to justify their stupid act. At this moment, the sergeant took matters into his own hands and shoved the cops away to speak to Trevor in private. He explained to the angry citizen how he would have been asked to hand in his camera if there was a shooting. But since there was no crime committed by Trevor, he was free to go. The sergeant handled the situation quite well and defended the citizens from cops who were nothing but rude. Later, Trevor filed an official complaint against the two officers at the police station. There was no lawsuit filed, but a formal complaint can go a long way in making the officers stick to protocol instead of indulging in personal agendas. Number six, good cop stands up for the minor. The police had received a complaint about a stolen dirt bike from a resident and her boyfriend. A little over two weeks later, the police were contacted again. This time, the resident claimed that she saw the dirt bike being sold on Facebook and contacted him. The police decided to check up on the location of this seller and see if he had the dirt bike. The only problem was that one of the police officers, who was the initial responding officer, was a bit ahead of himself. When the cop reached the location, he did not bother to question or verify if he indeed had the stolen bike. Instead, he went on and arrested the boy without any line of questioning. The boy was 14 years old and was a minor. He detained the boy and put him straight in his car. In justice, much Mr. Bad Cop. He, along with his fellow officers, then searched the house for the bill of sale. While the search was happening, the other officers were discussing whether the arrest was even legal. One of them decided to step up and speak to the initial responding officer. He politely explained that the detainment did not seem legal since he was a minor. He was to be dealt with much more precaution. They also asked the cop whether he had even verified if the boy was rightfully detained. The body cam footage shows that he had not verified any facts before putting the handcuffs on the boy. As you can guess, what followed was a lot of backtracking. The officers came and released the minor. The boy then went to the house and showed them the bill of sale where he had legitimately bought the dirt bike. The boy's parents came forward in the press conference and demanded that police officers be taught and trained before being sent out on operations. Luckily, the other cops were there to save the boy. Otherwise, he would have been wrongfully accused and arrested by the initial responding officer. Number seven, Park Security gets embarrassed for wrongful detainment. A bunch of YouTubers were out at Valley Fair to do pranks and interact with the people who visited there. But things took a wrong turn when they were accused of something they did not do. The YouTubers were standing in the queue for a ride when a couple of girls seemingly cut the line. They went in to question why the girls had cut the line when they had been waiting there for a long time. But apparently the girls didn't take that well. A few minutes later, a security guard approached them and accused them of assault. Now that's an overreaction. The guard did not listen to the boys when they said they had the whole scene recorded on camera. There was not a single clip where they grabbed anyone. Instead, the guard was adamant that the boys had committed a felony. He demanded that they identify themselves and head to the office. But the YouTubers were angry about the accusation. They claimed that they would leave the park but had no reason to go to the office and be detained. The cops were called and they quickly put the security guards in their place. They calmly listened to the whole 
fiasco. When they had confirmed that there was no felony committed by the boys, they were allowed to leave. But the cops did issue a trespassing warning to them. To make such a huge accusation with no proof, these guards need to face some consequences by the park management for sure. Number eight, sheriff arrests a dirty cop. This cop is about to be humiliated by his superior for committing a crime on duty. Apparently, this cop was accused of bringing a cell phone into the correctional facility. When the other cops found out about the crime, they did not push it under the rugs. Instead, the news went out in the open until the sheriff got the wind of it. It was not going to be a pretty sight for this bad cop. Bringing a cell phone to the jail is a felony. The sheriff made sure that the cop knew what crime he had committed before he gave the legal punishment. You can hear the disappointment in his voice when he was talking to the cop. He had even asked beforehand whether the cop had submitted his resignation to remind him that he should have done so himself in the first place. Apparently, the officer thought he would get away with it, but the sheriff had no room for dirty cops. He was fired on the spot. Superiors like these can help keep the police department running with the values of dignity and respect. They are the only ones who can change the image of police in the country and among the public for good. Number nine, female cop stands against the sheriff. In this embarrassing ordeal, the sheriff was put under scrutiny after a bunch of city cops witnessed something suspicious about him. A suspect named Philip Chacon was believed to be involved in a stabbing incident. When the police caught up to him, he got the lead and locked himself inside the house. The police officers surrounded the house and demanded that he come out and surrender. However, the suspect did not comply and remained shut inside the house. While this fiasco was on, a sheriff came to the scene and demanded that the police clear out the scene. He claimed that he would handle the situation himself. The female cop did not like that idea one bit and contacted the department to send a superior to talk to the sheriff. The female cop suspected that the sheriff had a little too much to drink. A fellow officer confirmed her suspicion and stated that he could smell the breath on him too. They decided that they would not leave the scene. Later, Shacken came out of the house and surrendered. It was found that the sheriff had called the suspect and somehow convinced him to give in to the arrest. This was quite suspicious, and the details on this matter are part of a different investigation. The city cops had noticed the unusual behavior and reported the crime. They got a search warrant from the court that allowed them to search the sheriff's phone. The cops arrived at his office, but it was not as easy as they had anticipated. The sheriff was in no mood to give up his phone. There is no legal ruling that allows the sheriff to disobey the search warrant but his authority in his department intimidated the other officers to comply. The cops tried to reason with him, but he wouldn't budge. He kept roaming in his office and refused to give his two phones to the cops. The city cops had no choice but to contact their chief. When he arrived at the scene, he clearly stated that there would be an arrest if the officers did not comply with the orders of the search warrant. Even then, no compliance. Now that's bold. The chief had to pull out the big guns and close the building to lock them inside. Seeing the city cops wouldn't budge, the sheriff finally gave away his phone. It was later found that the sheriff had given a different phone than the one used to contact the suspect, Chacon. Getting that intel, the city cops came down later to arrest the sheriff. Even then, he had the audacity to resist his arrest and was rightly charged with battery. This case is every aspect of weird, it seems. That's all on the good cops who had the decency to rise up to their fellow partners and even their superiors in some cases. It is never easy, but these cops showed their moral compass was in the right direction. Which one shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments and share with us an encounter where you met a good cop. While you are at it, make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We will be bringing more of such videos to keep your curiosity meter running. Until our next upload, have a great day and thanks for watching.